This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Associated Equipment Distributors. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. OEM lead times are getting longer relative to last year, according to Stifle's second quarter ag equipment dealer survey. A net 74% of dealers said lead times have increased compared to last year. While lead times are still elevated, the percentage of dealers who report longer lead times has been dropping over the last four quarters. In the third quarter of 2021, a net 92% of dealers reported longer lead times. According to the survey, expectations of when dealers expect inventory to normalize continues to push out. A total of 34% of dealers now expect new equipment inventory to normalize in 2023, down from 47% last quarter. Another 38% now expect normalization in 2024, consistent with 39% last quarter. But 25% expect normalization after 2024. This is up from 5% last quarter. Analyst Stanley Elliott says they believe this push out in expectations for normalized inventory levels reflects further supply chain and production disruptions, likely in part due to the Ukraine conflict and China's zero COVID policy. One New Holland dealer commented, our dealership started 2022 off strong. Sales were in line or better than Q1 of 2021. Low inventory levels, long lead times, and allocations have caught up to us. Q2 is about 10% less than Q2 of 2021 due to the inventory situation. This week's dealers on the move include Titan Machinery, Johnson Tractor, and United Ag and Turf. On July 11th, Titan Machinery announced its acquisition of Heartland Ag Systems. The deal is expected to close in August. We'll have more on the acquisition later in the episode. Case IH dealer Johnson Tractor has acquired Value Implement, expanding into the West Central Wisconsin market. The acquisition brings Johnson Tractor's total locations up to nine. John Deere dealer United Ag and Turf has acquired Fish and Still Equipment, adding five stores to United Ag and Turf's South Central region for a total of 36 locations in that region and 73 ag stores in total. Now here's Michaela Pockner with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks, Kim. A recent white paper from the Association of Equipment Manufacturers outlines 13 trends that could influence how food is produced, many of which hinge on adoption of precision agriculture technologies. As a growing population, climate change, supply chain challenges, demographic shifts, and labor shortages are pushing farmers to do more with less, precision agriculture is primed to influence the future of global food production. Precision Ag is key to helping farmers produce more with less environmental impact. The AEM's Environmental Benefits of Precision Agriculture study found farmers using precision technology saw a 4% increase in crop production, a 9% reduction in herbicide and pesticide use, and a 6% reduction in fossil fuel use. With food security contingent on water security, The AEM predicts embracing precision irrigation will help ensure a stable food supply. The association's study found growers using precision irrigation reduced their water use by 4%. The AEM report calls connectivity the linchpin of agriculture's future because connectivity enables precision technologies, artificial intelligence and automation, and other components of the food chain of the future. The report says only 25% of U.S. farms use connected equipment or devices to access data. As reliable internet access becomes more available, using technology becomes more practical and agriculture will shift to being more productive while conserving resources. The AEM report predicts artificial intelligence will begin to assume a prominent role throughout the entire crop production process over the next 10 years. Equipment will work smarter and do more using AI, machine learning, and image recognition. The report cites a 24% increase in net returns when including both input savings and yield increases due to less compaction with the use of autonomous equipment. Finally, as food production changes, so will the business models of farm equipment dealers and manufacturers. The AEM predicts a rise of equipment as a service giving farmers the opportunity to lease equipment for a specific time period rather than buy the machine. Dealers could include additional services such as data analytics and preventative maintenance in the price of the rental. 
Custom farming will also become more popular as farmers look to add more acres without assuming the risk of buying and maintaining additional equipment. The AEM predicts the industry will also shift to outcome-based pricing models. These are programs that guarantee a certain yield goal, elimination of disease or other metric, as digital tools make outcomes easier to guarantee. We have a link to the AEM's Future of Food Production white paper in the web story for this broadcast. That's it from today's Technology Corner. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Michaela. Titan Machinery's acquisition of Heartland Ag Systems brings together Case IH's largest North American dealer with Case IH's largest application equipment distributorship. Chairman and CEO David Meyer said, From a strategic point, this is going to be not only good for the industry, it's going to be good for Case IH, it's going to be good for the farmers and ranchers, and it's also good for that commercial applicator out there because it takes all our existing parts and service locations we have in our core footprint. All of a sudden, you've got that many touch points for the customer for this parts and service support. Harlan Ag Systems has been focused on the commercial application business since 1966, and in that time has grown to 12 stores, with distribution covering 17 Midwestern and Northwestern states. The acquisition provides Titan access to the commercial application segment of the market which Meyer said the dealership previously was unable to participate in due to Case IH's distribution agreements. The commercial application customer accounts for about 40% of the self-propelled sprayer industry today, Meyer said. Through this transaction, Titan Machinery now has distribution rights for the entire North American Case IH New Holland and Case Construction product portfolio. In addition to the commercial applicator market, Heartland also brings short-line manufacturing expertise through its vertical integration of proprietary specialized equipment for the commercial customer, Meyer said. The manufacturing segment includes fertilizer toolbars, spreaders, tenders, tanks, and various application-specific trailers and represents about 11% of Heartland's total equipment sales and has a margin profit similar to Titan's existing business, Meyer said. A recent survey from Farm Equipment saw farmers rank short-line manufacturers over major lines in their available self-repair resources. Just over 52% of farmers said short lines have the edge this year, up from 46% last year. The percentage considering majors to have the edge in self-repair was down to 15% from 19% last year. The percentage of farmers who were neutral on the topic was down from 35% last year to 33% this year. Self-repair has been in the spotlight more than usual in 2022, with John Deere currently facing 13 lawsuits from farmers regarding right to repair. Broken down by the major lines farmers most identify their operation with, ACO farmers were the most likely to say short lines have the edge in self-repair resources, with 56% picking short lines. John Deere farmers followed with 53% picking short lines as having the edge in self-repair. Exactly half of all surveyed New Holland and Kubota farmers picked short lines, with 25% of New Holland farmers and 30% of Kubota farmers picking majors. Some 48% of farmers identifying with Case IH said short lines have better self-repair resources, the lowest by brand. Farmers also ranked short lines over majors in terms of their responsiveness. Just over half of surveyed farmers said short lines had the edge in this category, above the 47% who said the same last year. Some 10% said majors had the edge in responsiveness, down from 13% last year. According to the latest equipment sales numbers from the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, both U.S. and Canada sales for tractors over 100 horsepower were up for the first half of the year. There were 11,282 tractors with over 100 horsepower sold in the U.S., a 10% increase from the 10,231 sold last year. This was the highest mid-year sales figure reported in the last five years. In Canada, sales came in at 1,741 units, up 2% from 1,710 the year before, the second highest mid-year figure reported since 2018. U.S. four-wheel drive tractors sales were down 11% year-over-year to 1,286 units. This was also the second highest mid-year sales figure out of the last five years. Canadian four-wheel drive tractor sales were down 28% year-over-year to 349 units, the largest percentage decrease seen in this year's mid-year equipment sales. All other equipment sales for the first half of 2022 were down year-over-year, including U.S. combine sales down 6% and Canadian combine sales down 16%. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lessetermedia.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us.